Welcome back to the Bruder Hop YouTube channel. Uh, working through this wonderful volume, Following the Call, Living the Sermon on the Mount together. We are on chapter 19, Marriage. And um, the verse is Matthew 5, 31 through 32. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Um, so these obviously have been much discussed words um, in the course of the Christian um, faith over the centuries, mm -hmm. and um, often they've been argued away yeah. because uh, divorce is a very difficult subject um, and has brought a lot of pain to many people. Um, I'm sure all of us know someone who's gone through that, uh, that tragedy um, in their lives or have experienced it ourselves. And it's natural to want to find some way um, to resolve this tension. Can we be faithful to Jesus' teachings and yet... Um, you know, find new love in a new relationship after a divorce. And uh, there's some excellent, excellent readings um, in this chapter, which I really almost can't add to. Yes. Um, and without, without um, exception, they all point to the fact that Jesus meant what he said, mm -hmm. and there's really no way around it. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's um there's this this want to um supply kind of a, a workaround for sure when it comes to this question. But as is pointed out in the first section um of this chapter, that that unity through marriage is indissoluble. And it's beyond just the two people that are committing to each other. So it's not really possible. It's beyond human intentions or the wish to resolve a situation. Um, basically, the intentionality with which we have to approach marriage is the most important thing. It is, it's a bedrock of a, of a completely new, um, a new start, but also an eternal bond with God. And I thought that Dietrich Bonhoeffer points that out very well. Mm. Um, your love is your own private possession. Marriage is more than a private affair. And he talks about how that you become a link within the chain of God's mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. So I think this chapter is not depressing because it also points to what is true marriage. It doesn't so much focus on divorce, which is just non-negotiable. It's... It's um, putting an emphasis on what is important when it comes to marriage. Yeah, I mean, to be clear, there are there are times where separation is necessary um, mm -hmm. in case of abusive relationships or in case of um, uh, infidelity. You know, where a marriage relationship is really broken, right? And mm -hmm. and then it's not it's not honest to say that that. But in in no case should that be grounds for. Um, you know, for a Christian to seek remarriage because um, we have to, we just have to stay with what Jesus tells us. If mm -hmm. we try to get around anything that he says, the whole house, either we want the whole thing or we don't want it. Um, right. So there's these two, there's these two um, workarounds people like to uh, talk about. So mm -hmm. there's uh, the so-called Matthean uh, exception where he says, I mean, we just read it. Um, Anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, so um, people feel like that might be an exception um, where you could divorce and find another partner. But um, I think it very clearly is not endorsing um, remarriage at all. Um, it's right. just saying that separation um, in that case may be the most truthful thing. And then there's the um, the question of the Paulian privilege. Um, I think in Corinthians, uh, where Paul. Um, sanctions, I think, um, leaving an unbelieving spouse. Um, so someone who is not a Christian, who is, um, who is perhaps 
living in ways that are not that are not in line with Christian teaching, and in those cases, mm -hmm. um, Paul sanctions seems to sanction that. Um, but again, there is no question that you know remarriage is allowed as long mm -hmm. as the spouse is still living. So, um, yeah, these are these are difficult questions, and I think above all, um, we need to remember who Jesus was and how he was with people and how he always treated people with compassion. Mm -hmm. And he came for people whose lives were broken and, um, you know, who were in need of, mm -hmm. he came for the sick, not for the healthy, right? Right. And he pointed to a way that was beyond just human striving and mm -hmm. beyond maybe our understanding of a, of a fix to a situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's so much depth there. Yeah. 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 So we have to hold those two things um, at the same time, you know, the, the clarity of the teaching mm -hmm. and then the compassion that there is hope for everyone and um, new life is always possible. Amen to that. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, definitely interested in anyone's thoughts on this uh, thorny subject and uh, we'll see you next week.